Hi everyone, Mike here with another Massive Darkness painting video. This time I'm painting the Earth Elemental from the Elementals Expansion Pack. I am going to start off with a type of Xenothal Prime. I'm going to prime the entire miniature first entirely in Mechanicus Standard Grey, and then once that's dry, I'm going to spray the miniature from above using Corax White. Once that's done, you get an effect that looks like this. If you don't have these two colors, that's alright, you can just use this picture as your guide. The first thing I'm going to paint is all of the tree roots and tree stumps that are sticking out of the sky using Snakebite Leather Contrast Paint. And this is the only step I'm doing for the wood. I probably wouldn't paint an entire miniature with contrast paints, but it is a great way to create little shortcuts for big miniatures like this. The next color I'm using is Death World Forest, and I'm using this for all of the mossy areas on the elemental. And I just realized this guy has a few tree roots stuck to the side of his face, so I'm going back to my contrast paint to touch those up. So this is how the Earth Elemental is looking so far. Now I'm going to be painting the main body of the Elemental. For this I'm going to be using two different colors. The first one is Pure Dark Reaper and I've mixed that with an equal amount of water. The second color is going to be Half and Half Celestial Grey and Thunderhawk Blue. Now this is where the Xenothal Prime is really going to help you out. All of the areas that received grey paint are getting painted with the Dark Reaper. The lighter areas on the body that got the Corax white are getting the Celestial Grey and Thunderhawk Blue mix. I'm not doing any wet blending for this. Due to the angular nature of the body, I can get away with painting entire sections of the rock one color or the other. These paints have also been thinned with an equal amount of water, and for the most part, I'm only doing one coat of paint on the entire body. The only exception is if one of the rocks looks a little patchy. I like the way this looks so far, but I want to add a little more definition in between the rocks. So next I'm going to take some Nuln Oil, and I'm going to thin this with a little bit of water, and I'm going to apply it in between the individual rocks. If you wanted a more gritty look, you could of course put this over the entire body. Even though the game is called Massive Darkness, most of my miniatures for this game have a bright and almost cartoonish look, so I'm going to stick with that theme and give the rocks a cleaner look. Next I'm going to paint the brick wall using three different shades of brown. Once again I'm using the Xenothal Prime as my guide, and I'm painting the sides of the wall with Steel Legion Drab. The top of the brick wall, which received the Corax White Primer, is going to get a layer of Carrick Stone. The underside of the brick wall is getting a 50-50 mix of Dryad Bark and Steel Legion Drab. Now that the brick wall is done, I'm going to be adding shade to all the parts of the miniature that haven't received it yet. I'm going to start off using Ethonian Camo Shade on all of the moss. Now I'm switching to Agrax Earth Shade, and this is going over the entirety of the brick wall. After giving that plenty of time to dry, I'm going to do some highlights entirely with dry brushing. For the rocks, I'm applying a layer of Ulthuan Grey, and I'm using a small, flat-tipped brush for this that's really old and frayed. I'm being very selective with these highlights. As you can see, I'm only brushing over the raised edges. For the brick wall, I'm using Terminata Stone, although if you don't have this, you could use something like Screaming Skull. Once again, I'm using the small, flat-tipped brush, and I'm trying to only make downward strokes with the brush. This is going to help reinforce the illusion that there's a light source coming from above. And finally, I'm doing a very light dry brush of Elysian Green over the moss. Next, I'm going to paint the gemstone in the forehead and the eyes using these three colors. 
I'm starting off by painting the gemstone in the forehead with Screamer Pink. Now I'm putting some white scar on my palette, and I'm going to put a small dab of white onto each of the eyes. I want to do a very simple jeweling effect on this gemstone, so I'm going to start off by putting a white glint on the top left corner of the gem. Then I'm going to take some of that white scar, mix it into the Screamer Pink to make a lighter pink, and I'm going to paint the bottom half of the gemstone with this color. Right after this, I'm going to mix a little bit more white scar into the Screamer Pink. I'm going to paint a small crescent that follows the curve of the gemstone along the bottom. Next, I'm taking some fluorescent magenta from Vallejo and mixing that with a bit of water to create a glaze. I'm going to wash this over the white eye and all around it to create a glow effect. I'm calling this guy done, except for a few finishing touches and the base. Since I am going to be handling this miniature, I am going to seal it with a matte varnish right now. The base is going to be pretty simple and straightforward. I'm first covering the ground with sterling mud, and then I'm going to add a few rocks. These rocks are just pebbles that I found in my driveway. I do apologize for the poor angle that I'm filming this at. The tripod I normally use when I'm basing a miniature is broken, and I have a new one coming in from Amazon. Unfortunately, the two-day shipping has become two-week shipping. As you can see, I'm also adding a few little splashes of the sterling mud in random places on the elemental. And then I'm going to dry brush all of this sterling mud with some Steel Legion Drab. I also want to stick some of this mud on the bottom of the wall, just to make it look like he ripped it out of the ground. The little rocks that are on the ground are going to get painted with the same colors as the Earth Elemental. I first base coated the rocks with a thin layer of Dark Reaper. After that, I dry brushed them with a little bit of Thunderhawk Blue, and then a second lighter dry brush with Althuan Grey. Next, I'm just painting around the rim of the base using a Dark Grey. This one is German Grey from Vallejo. Now I'm going to add some static grass to the ground. I've mixed a little bit of PVA glue with water and I'm just dabbing this in random places in the dirt. And then I'm going to sprinkle on my static grass from Citadel. Final thing I'm doing to this miniature is adding a bit of moss. My favorite one to use is Burnt Turf Fine Flock from Woodland Scenics. I'm mixing that along with a pinch of some other moss textures into the rest of the PVA glue and water. I've created a mossy paste with this, and I'm going to add it in random places on the rock wall and onto the rocks that are on the base. I'm also going to add this in random patches on the moss that's growing on the earth elemental. Any areas that are poorly defined or any mold lines that I missed are also getting some of this moss. I'm mixing up a little bit of extra PVA glue and water and I'm going to dab this onto the ground in random places just to give the ground some more ground cover and I'm also going to put a few splashes onto the earth elemental. Once that's done, you can spray the entire miniature again with a matte varnish, but since it's really just the rim of the base that you need to worry about, I'm going to use some brush on matte varnish. There you have it, the Earth Elemental from Massive Darkness. A big thanks to all my patrons for supporting these videos, and a special thank you to Brian Jones for sponsoring the channel. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. I hope everyone's staying safe out there, and thanks for watching.